Hi folks, hope you can see this and uh, <clears throat> you can hear me okay. Maybe you could indicate if you're there, that would be fantastic. Thanks very much. Good, Gillis, thank you. Appreciate that. Good stuff. Uh, okay, John, great to see you there. Wonderful, thank you. Sarah, Leslie. Okay, let's 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 get moving. Um, <clears throat> first of all, as I've indicated, I think this is it's probably the most riskiest thing I've ever done um, <clears throat> in the terms that we've invited um, newbies to come on here and in fact great minds to people who never ever got to the advanced programs which means that um, you didn't get a kind of learning curve to go up that sort of took you close to a huge big jump off. I used to talk about, you know, taking, you know, coming close to a cliff, you know, walking up to the cliff, you look over the cliff and it falls forever and it kind of almost terrifies you. And the thing was, you know, to take a run up and a run up and then eventually to go for it and fly. And people flew and they find themselves in amazing destinations. But it was, for a lot of people, when they got to that point in these advanced programs, they felt the risk for themselves um, because they really had to step out of their comfort zone in ways that before they got to that program and never ever thought they could ever do. In fact, most people's left brains can't actually get what happens till they experience it. And yet here I am taking the risk to share some of that more advanced stuff. But then again, we're living in extraordinary times. What's happening in the world right now is, it's just some ways unbelievable. Only a few weeks ago, you know, who would have thought? I never thought I'd be doing this. But what I will tell you is that for a good few years now, an amazing group of people who came and attended the uh, Mind Story Extreme Mindfulness course, which was a day, London, Glasgow, Dublin, usual places. And we, we went through a part of this advanced program and particularly to what we're going to do here. And we, they were also joined by people who previously attended the original Mind Story course, which as I've said, previous, uh, you know, um, these live sessions, they were four days, usually two weekends, one after the other. If you're in a public course, in a business course, it was usually, you know, Thursday, Friday, and then Thursday, Friday, the following week. And you went through a massive big learning curve. And so people who did that, people did the next step, which was nine o'clock to seven o'clock at night. Then we had a party, some of you remember that. And we, uh, we, we um, people who did that course have also been part of this Extreme Mindfulness Group on Facebook, it's private, and we've been doing a lot of work of the type I'm going to explain to you. They do a more general thing, um, but we're going to do something specific for COVID here. And and uh, what they've been doing very kindly is, um, I was kind of advised by my my um, giants, some of you know what I'm talking about, others, what's that if you're a newbie, getting in touch with sort of my deep inner being, uh, the connection to whatever you believe in, if it's just your own subconscious or you believe in something but much bolder, I call it source because that allows you to allow that to fit whatever you believe and that's fine. But when I was deep in my alpha state and you've been learning to do that with this meditation, we'll do another meditation tonight to put this thing locked in, the uh, triple whammy thing, just do it fairly easily. Um, what, what happened was that I was advised to share something really powerful with um, that group, the Extreme Mindfulness Group, and they have been very kind. They have been working away on the few cases that we've got of COVID and the coincidences. We can't make any claims here, guys, and please don't ever do it yourself. Uh, of course we can't, but when you start to get so many coincidences, so-called coincidences, there comes a point when you realise, actually, maybe, just maybe, something more profound is happening. And so they've been doing exceptionally well. And because of their sharing and their experiences, I'm very clear about what I'm going to share with you. Now, they're going to get at a more advanced thing just after this call. They'll go and work for that for a week. And all going well, we'll share that with you in about a fortnight because next week I want to bring on Klaus Pertl to join us because uh, I think you're going to be really inspired by that. And then those of you beginners get two weeks to play with this new tool uh, and then we'll take you further. So that's that. Um, the thing was, the whole thing about the, the advanced stuff, the stuff that we do in those, the original two-day course or the next step or extreme mindfulness, was apart from to give people 
an amazing glimpse of what it's like to be a human being beyond, beyond what your left brain can handle. Really, really right brained appreciation. Was also, by doing this thing at the end, was to prove to people that programming works, that you know, attracting things into your life just works by being positive and dynamic and programming and not worrying about how a bit more interested in your why you want to manifest something. And then the more advanced things that did exist in the basic two-day course of Mind Stuff for Life or Mind Stuff for Business, the notion of middle of the night programming and stuff like that. And actually these conversations we have with these inner coaches, um, that actually something profound is happening. And then when they did the advanced thing, they just got proof because they did something extraordinary. So very briefly, um, those of you who are beginners with me, um, and those of you who did always do the basic courses and, and never quite got to the advanced thing for all the good reasons you have, let me just share some of the things we did again. I did it last week, but just to set this up. You know, what we did in the original, um, uh, the, the, the next step particularly, what we did was I would take up you know, we couldn't in a hotel, it was the Hilton in Glasgow, whatever it was, or the, I think it was the Marriott a few times. And what I would do is I would ask the hotel to give me two rooms on one of the floors and they allowed me to strip it out so there was no bed, there was no furniture, no chair, nothing at all. They got everything out so it was just an empty room, which you wouldn't expect in a hotel, especially a busy hotel like the Marriott in Glasgow. Um, and then what happened was... Um, we would place in there something completely strange, like a huge big Harley Davidson motorbike bike one day, and next door was a big colourful wigwam, and there was all sorts of other examples. And what we did was, once people get used to, because of had been so people, we get back into meditation, explain some stuff to them. And then later on, we did this thing where they all did an exercise, did it in pairs so they could share with a partner what was happening for them. So I would guide this meditation, they would go up the, up the lift onto the fifth floor, come out the fifth floor, go along to room 506, if that was the room they were to go in. And I say, one, two, three, open the door, step inside. And when they went inside, they, they were just to share with the person who was sitting beside them what, what was happening, you know, shape, particularly looking at shape, colour, texture, anything that was coming into their mind. And the first things that came into their mind, but very often a left brain would interfere and they couldn't quite do that initial thing. But a lot of them did. They got the shape. Nobody got a motorbike. Nobody got a wigwam. But they got triangles and colour and two big wheels, you know, stuff like that. Um, so that was giving a wee indication to the rest of the people there that this was beginning to work. And the only reason it might not be working for someone else was their left brain got in the way. They didn't quite just play with it. So then later on, uh, I would send someone out. We'd given them free locations in Glasgow or London or Dublin, whenever we did it. They knew the look locations. We had taken slides of the locations um, and what happened was they went out, they chose at random one of the three, I don't know which one they chose, they jump in a taxi, go to the location, once they're there they call me somebody remember the big old phones we had back then, they call me and uh, I would then um, ask the person to kind of relax themselves, look directly at the scene um, and then for everybody in the audience I guided them into meditation, they would then uh, imagine what they were seeing, they would come out of it, share it with the partner, and then uh, the guy would come back, or she would come back, and um, jump out of the taxi, come into the room, and stand in front of the audience and tell them where we were, and we would put up the slides then of that location, and it blew people's minds, that many of them might not have got it perfectly, but got some of it, and people who were guessing admit, oh, I just guessed, that's no use, it was a feeling thing, but enough people now were getting to think, oh, something's going on here. Later on, I had someone who was a good Mindstorm member, would be in another part of the country at a specific location. We knew the exact coordinates on the map. So I would tell the audience, this is the coordinates. They were in a, a deep meditative alpha state. I would tell them the coordinates. They would imagine they were there. Tell us what you see. And then the person would then phone me after we did the exercise. And i say, so where are you? And they would tell, tell us where they were. And people sometimes almost fell, back, fell off the seat with the amazement. In fact, one of my accountants was so, so inspired, or rather so challenged, in that the place where the Mindstorm member was actually in a boat in the Thames, rowing against the flow of the river, looking at Windsor Castle. And this guy, who's my accountant, got Windsor Castle. And he stood up in front of everybody, about two or three hundred people in the room, and he just um, used some sweary words, and marched out of the room totally and utterly shocked at what he'd just done. Big, big left brain, of course, but there you go. So 
um, dramatic, real dramatic, but that was only beginning. So then what we also did was we did stuff for in the Deep Alpha State, we, we considered the other parts of, of, of our existence. So we, for example, uh, did some amazing things. But one of the things we did was we had every, people in a deep meditation come out of the house of the red, with the red, red roof on the right bank of the river, got them to come out of there. They created a, a conservatory place, then created a garden, got them to do some interesting stuff. Then we got them to go out for a walk in the landscape. They found a tree in their imagination and they, in a very profound part of the exercise, stepped, or to use a word that's big, on the Whispers with Giants course, they merged into the tree. And then they just shared, after that, they, they journaled in what they experienced being a tree, thinking they were a tree, thinking they were inside a tree, what was going on? And profound things happened for people. So they went, we continued on the walk and then they found a friendly animal of whatever species they want that, that came to their conscious, some were elephants. So always, um, for the sake of the exercise, a four-legged animal, uh, a mammal, and, uh, well, you can imagine, once they studied it and so on, uh, that mammal agreed and sort of thing and they merged into the animal. And again, that blew people's minds to feel what it's like to be a, a mammal on this planet that we share with them. Profound things happened. Then ultimately what we did was we started working with the human body. And then the final test was we would sit in pairs and each person had come, filled in a little form thing, talked about, you know, the name, age, whereabouts, of someone who was seriously ill with a serious illness. And they would then uh, share that confidently con because of the fact that everything was in confidence and they trusted one another and they would share where the person was so the other person went to the alpha state eyes are closed they would project their mind to that exact location and in that location the person would read to them exactly what they're seeing so that they could imagine sorry what was wrong with the person so they could imagine the person's illness if it was heart disease they could see their heart they had a model of health to compare it to someone who's really really healthy usually an athlete or something and they built up these kind of relationships in their mind and then um they would uh go to the, wherever the illness was, if it was heart disease, they would see the difference, they would then type that information into a computer, they would press enter, they would go and open a cabinet, in the cabinet there was always something there, because where it comes from, no one knows, but no one never found anything not in there, something came out, it was in there, a lace, a pencil, the end of a rubber and the end of a pencil, let's say, it could be anything, and it was always anything, and what you did was you took it out and you thought, what did I, what did I do with this? Then what people did was they then had to use their left and right brain. They're deep in the alpha state. This is way after all this advanced training. And they would imagine what to do with that to improve that person's heart. Some people might, you know, use a lace to tie a sort of knot on maybe one of the arteries going into it. Or someone would maybe, if it's a pencil at the end of a rubber or an eraser at the end of a pencil, you know, rub something out. Or whatever they were doing then they would imagine the person perfectly healthy. And they did that, and then this next exercise, more advanced one, was they did the same thing again with different pairs, so people, different people to work with. This time they only gave them the, the name and the age and the whereabouts. They didn't give them what the illness was. Now you need to hear this, your left brain's going to go, what? They were able to then project their mind to that person and tell their partner what was wrong with their loved one or their friend without being told what it was get it confirmed do the same healing thing and it blew people's minds now some people didn't do it they couldn't do it and the reason why they couldn't do it was because their big left brain got in the way and they were kind of get caught up in trying to prove to themselves they could do this fearful of failure uh, you know the 10 out of 10 type person at school if I don't get 10 out of 10 it's not going to work and they're all anxious unbelievable and even though I said look get your left brain out of the way some people get stuck. Some people didn't want to do it because it frightened them and we expected that. But the vast majority did. And varying degrees of success. But once you've done it a few times, everybody knows because enough people in the room are doing it, you realise, oh my God, every human being can do this. Now, so what we've been doing as a group on the extreme mindfulness course um, is a few years now we've been working cases cancers heart disease strokes you know whatever 
Now we, it's not always the case that people um, don't pass on. Of course they do. Some do. So especially extreme situations. Of course they do. Because we can't play God here. We, we ain't God and we ain't playing God because there's a bigger thing going on, of course, if someone is moving on. And all sorts of beliefs around that and respect all of them. And, but the coincidences of people coming right back out of extreme situations or life-threatening situations is overwhelming. Way beyond chance. But we don't claim anything and never will. So... Are you up for this? If you're a beginner or you're here as a guest for someone, maybe you need to trust them. And if you were, if you're a great mindset member, never got to these programs, you, you knew these kind of things went on. And so here's what we're going to do. We're going to go on to uh, the landscape that we kind of visited last week when you created your fountain. And this is a a new feature in mind store. Well, I'm saying new over the last God knows how many years, but but for a lot of people who came originally, a lot of old faces, as it were, have returned because of these live sessions. I'm so grateful for that and delighted that you've come back and got in touch. Um, you won't be aware of the fountain, but we did it last week. And if you did miss that, then go back to last week's my timeline. You can watch that, do the meditation, and then build your fountain. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a triple whammy meditation technique, it, it, it works in the three modalities, the audio, the visual, the kinesthetic. I'm going to go into the landscape, remind you of that, uh, get, bring you to your um, fountain, get you to drink, drink some water. If you remember, you created a vessel, you drink out of it, you do this association to what you normally drink water with, so would you continue to uh, hydrate yourselves, which is apparently big uh, if you're getting caught out with delete this programme, coronavirus, um, uh, being hydrated is really important, but there you go. So, and then what we'll do is we'll leave there, go further into the landscape, and then we're going to create a very special place. And this we're going to call uh, the COVID-19 room. Okay, just keep it simple. But it's not simple, it's profound. Now what I want you to create, and I'll give you the space to create it in the meditation, you create a, a, a big box of a room that's made out of stone, um, like bulletproof glass it's only glass big oblong thing big enough to take a platform in there that's about the height of a bed a hospital bed and it's in the middle of this room and as you look at it you look at it from the narrow end of the oblong and on the right hand side the the glass wall comes down and can go back up again and on the left hand side the glass wall can go down and up again and this is important in the middle is a huge a platform that will allow a patient let's call them a patient not a good one but the patient to come in and to lie on top of this platform now the platform is really important you understand what i'm saying here you have to trust me this we've tested this we've, this came to me and you know just go with it we're getting great results the platform has um, it's made of silver and it's a silver web um, or um, a, simple, a, a silver grid. The silver, the metal silver came, and there's lots of good reasons for that, but I'm going to that just now. It's silver and the holes through it, this grid, uh, you can see right down to the core of the earth. When the panel below it opens up, it slides open and now you can see all to the, in your imagination, because you need to do it in your imagination, right to the core of the earth. The heat coming from it is obvious, but you're not in the room. You're not in the room. You're outside looking in. And so what we so what we do is, uh, come with me, and then we'll do this in an exercise so you'll build it and understand it. A meditation, a guided meditation, an active meditation, not a passive meditation. It's a big difference, powerful difference. Both are wonderful. So for example, in the in the case will work here is why not we'll just go for Boris everybody knows who Boris is and irrespective of your politics let's not get caught up in that as a human being the brother of someone the son of someone the father of someone and so on come on let's get back together here a human being needing help and it's because it's such a public one we can all just do it so what happened? we know that Boris is in St Thomas's Hospital in London. So wherever you are in the world watching this in a moment, you would imagine projecting your mind to that location, to that very location. 
and you imagine you can find in your imagination Boris, presumably on his hospital bed uh, in, in St Thomas. Once you know you've found him in your imagination, you just accept it, he's there. You just, well, in my imagination then, so he might, he's there, he must be there in my imagination. You accept it. You then, what you do is you then bring your consciousness back to this glass room. You allow the, as you're looking at it, right hand wall to go down and you allow to come in Boris Johnson, who comes in and now is resting on top of the silver gridded platform. Then the door closes up. So now he's encased in this glass. You're outside from, from the narrow end looking at this. What next, what happens now is you count slowly from 30 to 1. Now this is, a, this is important. 30 to 1. Um, and as you count from 30 to 1, so 30, 29, 28, 27 and so on, you imagine coming from somewhere up in the universe, the centre of the universe, brilliant white light, the brightest light you've ever imagined, something you see in a movie, and it's coming down through that roof, all the way in, filling up this room entirely with the most brilliant white light you've ever, 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 ever can imagine. And, and as that comes in and fills up, the protective shield from below... Boris's body now swings swings open, just slides open, and now this light takes all of the COVID virus and all of its impact in his entire body, in his brain, and all his systems and organs, everything that's been challenged by his immune system and so on, all of it is getting blasted down through with this brilliant white light through every cell in his body, out from his body, down through the grid, and all the way to get burned up at the centre of the planet. And you count slowly from 30 as you do this. 30 to 1. Then what you do is you close over uh, the, the below his body. You close over the platform. You continue then to count slowly from 1 to 30. With the brilliant white light still happening. And now your imagination, your purpose, your intention is that every single cell in his body is now regenerating, is, in, is, is becoming alive again, filled with its proper functioning and the way that it should work, its programming, if you like. And every system and organ, every cell in his body returns to perfect health by the time you get to 30. Now, when we get to 30, the white light, the white light stops, the left hand wall goes down and Boris, and it's important they come in from the right and left, just trust me, he goes out the left hand side, but as he's going out, you know he's perfectly healthy again. And off he goes. And it closes up again. And then when we, I, if you come back to this page tomorrow, I will give you a link to a new private Facebook page which you can apply because you've attended this or you've watched this if it's afterwards. You become part of the group and anybody in the group has got the privilege of sharing the name, age, whereabouts and you have to trust the group then. Not down to 19 Acacia Avenue, you know, whatever, but generally the town or part of the town or the village because most people have no idea where this person is. They're all over the place. Um, or more than likely, and sorry for this one, but forgive me, they must be in hospital. They must be obviously in intensive care needing this help. And we will work them. All of us will work each person's case. And you can share on what happened, what happened when you did it. So here's some extras about it. What you also need is because we're going to work on this, I explained this in previous of these live sessions, we want to work in the audio, the visual and the kinesthetic. Let's go back to the visual. The visual is obvious. It's brilliant white light. The kinesthetic is you're going to feel the vibration in your body, or you're going to imagine it so, of this intense bright light coming from the universe and the whole thing, verb, you know, resonating this powerful light. You're going to feel that vibration or you're going to imagine you feel it. Remember, making things up in this alpha state that you're going to be in 
is actually intuition. So just trust yourself you're making up that vibration. And you're going to feel with the protection of the glass, nevertheless, the heat on your face. So you're going to see the brilliant white light, you're going to feel the vibration in your body, and you're going to feel the heat coming from the window. However, coming with this into that space is a loud noise, a vibration, a resonance, a deep resonance. And the resonance that came was one that many of you are familiar with and some of you won't be. It is the amazing word that sounds like oh. Um, um. Now as I'm doing that, I can feel the vibration in my nose. So you can do that and, and your imagination is that is coming from the universe and the word om is the word for the universe. But the sound of it, if you've ever meditated with it or I'm sure you've heard of it, it's, some people joke about it, no joke. If you practice this a few times on your own, um, do it for about five or 10 minutes, you will feel and you'll get louder with it. You will feel the vibration of it in your, your head and stuff, it's amazing. So that's the sound. But here's the issue we've been told for the men who've been practicing with this. You know how men somehow can only, somehow or other can only think of one thing at a time. So someone said, well, I can, I can hear the sound, but I don't see the light or um, I'm not feeling the... And, and, or some people can say, I can, I can hear it, but I'm not seeing it and vice versa because we're strong in one of these modalities. So what you do is concentrate initially on seeing the light and counting from 30 to 20. Then from 20 to 10, concentrate on seeing if you can imagine the sound or do it with your own breathing, but imagine it inside verberating away over Boris's Johnson. Sorry, Boris's body. And then finally from 10 to one, um, feel the vibration, the resonance. And using that and doing the best you can will be more than enough. And as you're counting back up again, uh, then you're focusing uh, on, again, the same thing. Feel, feel the vibration, the energy. Um, the heat can go now because, you know, you're not going to open. The heat can go now. It's just the vibration, the brilliant white light doing its thing in the cells. You may start to feel really inspired yourself, like your body's becoming alive. Then, of course, you can concentrate on the sound and then finally the, the brilliant white light. And once they've, you've got to 30, you slide out. Now I've suggested some people just to record themselves counting on the phone from, one, from 30 to one, back up again, they can play that. So that's in the background as they're concentrating on the visual and the, and the, the sound. And you know, we've been doing this now and people who were on ventilators, who weren't expected to do well, are off ventilators, they're back healthy uh, and so on. So, you know, uh, who knows? We're not going to claim anything, and please don't yourself, but do join me in doing this work. And the team, I'm going to, going to speak to them after this session, we're going to take us another advanced level, practice with it for a week, so we can share it with you in two weeks' time, because next week it's, uh, I'm going to be with Klaus Pertel, who a great Mindstore uh, teacher in Germany, who also runs uh, the amazing um, alternative a cancer or complementary, if you like to use that word, cancer clinic in Stuttgart, again with extraordinary results and he's a joy and a great friend of mine and those of you who have met him know how wonderful he is, you're going to enjoy that next week, that's something to look forward to, but in between that we do lots of work. So the point was, I asked you to volunteer, there was a volunteer kind of agreement, in other words, if you come on here, you're going to do the work. So tomorrow, uh, by about mid-morning, I should be able to place up the name of the Facebook page that you can join to start working the cases. So I'm going to go in now and do the meditation. It's a triple whammy. So if you've been coming, you know what that's about now. Uh, if you haven't been before, then just trust the process that I'm doing. At one point, we'll take seven deep breaths. With the first inhalation, you'll imagine brilliant white light coming from the, your, your, the soles of your feet up to your ankles. And then in the next inhalation, it's from your ankles to your knees. The next one, knees to your to your hips, 
hips to your neck, so your entire torso, then from your fingertips up to your neck again, then your head, and then finally like a huge big ball of brilliant white light around you, um, the, the seventh inhalation. Then we'll do an amazing thing called the inner smile. Um, so, and then I'm going to take you onto the landscape and so on, and then we'll create this amazing room and I'll run you through how you use it and you've got it for the rest of your life. And if all these scientists and others are commenting, saying, look, uh, this might be evening out a little bit now, let's, God, let's hope it is, who knows? There could be a second spike, could be a second wave. Um, and others are saying, well, in the future, we're going to have viruses again, delete that program. And if that's the case, then we're going to be better prepared uh, to help. And if not you, then who? I don't know why you were called to this. I don't know why you're attracted to this. I don't know why someone said to you, you should come and listen or for you to read that agreement and say, okay, I'm going to do it. But don't back out now. Now, I've risked myself to share this. I don't know who's on here. I would only ever share this stuff with Vance Group who have been through an amazing learning curve. But it's extraordinary times and it needs extraordinary people to do extraordinary things. And you're one of the extraordinary people. And I'm asking you, to step up to the plate. You're going to join an amazing team of people. The people who are on the other group will come and join and be, participate. And, you know, we'll get amazing results. Amazing results. We can't win all the time because there's a bigger thing going on. But you'll feel great. You'll know that you're doing something. You'll learn a lot about yourself. And, well, I've started sharing advanced stuff. Who knows where this goes in a few weeks' time? Okay, so let's do the meditation now. Um, so our classic meditation, just let me check the time. Yeah, we're okay. So this meditation method is, I've been teaching this stuff for years. You just have to trust me. Don't ask me why, why we do it, because I haven't got time. But here's what we do. We come to the edge of a chair. If your back can you do support itself, if you need the back of a chair to support you, then use that freely. Of course you will. But you want both feet firmly on the ground, like I've got now. I'm just going to kick off my slippers because I'm upstairs in my study. Uh, so I've got my feet firmly on the ground now, with socks on, but in the summer outside, you know, on the, on the earth, on the grass, oh my God, maybe we'll be allowed out again, the parks even, you can sit in the park bench and do this. Because look, um, once you've got this tool, you might, you might probably want to use it for anything. But we'll talk about that in two weeks' time. Let's learn. So we sit with both feet firmly on the ground. We then position our shoulders over our hips. That straightens up our nervous system. Or, our, or our, um, if you're into the Eastern stuff, your chakras. And then your ears over your shoulders. Um, and then you sit there with your hands on the lap, palms up, first two fingers of both hands, resting in what's called the Kibera Mudra or the three fingers technique. And then you simply close your eyes. We'll take three deep breaths and I'll take you through the process. Now, at the end of this, I will count from one to seven. And when you reach seven, and only when you reach seven, because there's a process, you open your eyes. We train you how to get into what we call the alpha state and how to come back out of it. Now, like we've tested this with electroencephalographs. I did this a way, way back at Stirling University. This stuff works, guys. Trust me. Okay, it gets you into the alpha theta range. Uh, and we're looking for a very special range. And that's probably around... Uh, well, let's not go into the science of it just now. But anyway, so let's... Let's do this. So close your eyes and take a big deep breath and as you exhale, relax. Take another deep breath and again, relax. Take one more deep breath and as you exhale, relax even more. Relax your scalp. So how to do that? Just simply say to yourself, my scalp is relaxing, my scalp is relaxed. Relax your forehead. My forehead is relaxing, my forehead is relaxed. And it will just continue to get better and better the more you practice this. And if you come every day to the page, you'll get a case to work, well, you're going to become a genius at this. Every time you use this, your own immune system is inspired, empowered, and you manage your stress. It's a stressful time. Relax your face. I feel my face relaxing. My face is relaxed. 
Relax your jaw. Relax your lips. Now relax your nostrils at the outside of the nostrils and allow the relaxation to flow into your nostrils, into the very back of your nostrils and up and beyond there into your sinuses, into all the other connections and places it goes in your head, into your ears, down into the back of your throat. Relax that whole ear, nose and throat area. Just imagine it really relaxing. Now come back to your lips and move into your mouth, the whole architecture of your mouth now, and relax your mouth inside, it, around your gums, to your cheeks, to your palate, your entire mouth now relaxing. Take your tongue now and tongue it up and ever so gently touch the roof of your mouth directly behind your front two teeth. Now relax your tongue. Allow the flow of relaxation to flow from the tip of your tongue gently through its body into its root now and now relax your throat. Just doing this for yourself every day, relaxing your throat is really powerful. Relax your neck. Relax your shoulders. As soon as you relax your shoulders, your arms and hands relax anyway, but here's what you do, imagine the relaxation and send it down your arms now, past your elbows, into your forearms, your wrists, your palms and your fingertips as they caress. Relax your arms and hands. Relax your upper back. Relax your chest. And now, Relax your heart and lungs. If ever there was a time to relax your heart and lungs. And as you relax them, imagine them functioning in perfect health. Relax your lower back. Relax your abdomen. Relax your thighs. Relax your knees. Relax your calves. Relax your ankles. I like to stop at the ankles to feel the what the Chinese call chi, the Japanese ki, the Indian subcontinent prana, life force. Feel it in your ankles. Wow. Relax your toes the soles of your feet and your heels. Now, take your mind away from where you are right now and just for a moment, go and enjoy yourself by, by imagining you've gone to some place on the planet that you personally love to go and you, you just associate it with relaxation. It could be a beach some, in some place in the world, it might be a wonderful forest somewhere, might even be by the side of a river, a loch, the sea, wherever. I'm off to the Caribbean, the island of Nevis, a beautiful beach I know there. Whatever you, want, you, you would like to go now, imagine being there now. Really use your imagination, send yourself there. Imagine being there right now in a beautiful summer's day. What would you be seeing? So decide to see it. If you're there right now, what would you be feeling? Surely the sunshine on your face, maybe a gentle breeze in your hair. You're wearing lighter clothing probably. How does that feel? How does the lighter feeling compare with your clothing you've actually got on? What are you hearing? I've got birdsong, buzzing of insects. Light rustle in the palm trees above me. Silver sand, turquoise sea. Where are you? What are you doing? I'll soon speak again. Enjoy it.
Okay, now take a big deep breath and as you exhale, relax even more. Bring your awareness back to your body now. In a moment, we'll take the seven inhalations. Remember, you're taking and shaping and working with the brilliant white light. Now, let's take your first inhalation. The brilliant white light is filling up to your ankles. Now from your ankles up to your knees as you inhale. Imagine sucking up from the earth this brilliant white light. Now from your knees up to your waist. Now your entire torso. Now from your fingertips up your arms right up to your neck. Now your entire inner head. And finally, out of the crown of your head, surrounding you in a brilliant big ball of brilliant white light, your final inhalation. Now, form a smile on your face as if you had just been the most funniest movie on the planet and you're with a friend and you're both smiling at one another. Form the most amazing smile. And smile first of all. Keep the smile on your face throughout this process, but really concentrate now and smile to yourself. You know, you're an amazing human being and you're about to find that out. Smile to yourself. Now smile to your throat. Smile, just really smile to your throat. Really appreciate, be grateful for your throat. Smile to your throat. Smile now to your thymus. So this is a gland just behind your breastplate, just about an inch down from the top of you, that notch in your breastplate, the bottom of your neck, just in behind there. Um, some, say it's, some say it's like an almond-shaped um, gland. Think about this gland. Some say it's got everything to do with your immune system, but just smile to your, your thymus gland. And even if you don't know where these places are in your own anatomy, then that's fine. Just... The brain does to just smile with the thought of it and the name of it is enough. The intention's all we need here, guys. Smile to your heart. And as you smile to your heart, think about everything to do with your heart, not just its wonderful job it's done all your life, but what it's associated with in terms of love. Not only giving love, but receiving love. Bit of both. Now relax. Now smile to your lungs. Oh my God, smile to your lungs. How grateful are, are we for them now? Smile to your lungs. Smile to your liver, big organ, right-hand side of the body. Smile to your liver. Smile to your spleen, left-hand side of the body. To the pancreas, somewhere in between. Now smile to your bladder. Sorry, smile to your kidneys, forgive me. Smile to your kidneys. Two organs up there at the, your back. Obviously now smile to the bladder. Usually when I was doing this live in an audience, maybe get a little smile now and a big smile usually and a bit of laughter. Smile to your sexual organs. There you go. Come back to your face now. Smile this time to your actual face. Real smile. Get the smile going now because when you do it next, the next two moves are amazing. Really exaggerate the smile. First of all, smile to your eyes. Smile to your eyes. Now smile to your brain. Imagine that smile. And imagine your brain really goes up from the middle of the front of your brain all the way to the back of the brain. Feel what happens as you smile to your brain. It's amazing. Smile to your skull. And imagine now the vertebrae as they come right up from the base of your spine and now tucking in there, in below your skull. Smile to every one of the vertebrae all the way down your back. All the way down your back. Imagine smile to every one of them. Smile. Smile, smile. In other words, smiling to your skeletal structure that's holding you up. 
smile to your coccyx, your tailbone. Now let's go inside again, smile to your stomach. Smile to your intestines. Smile to your colon. Smile once more to yourself. Smile to someone out there in the world that could do with a smile right now. Someone you know. Smile to the world itself. Now, that's the triple whammy. Take a big deep breath and as you exhale, relax. Now imagine once again standing on the lush green grass on the bank of a river, the river's behind you. And if you're doing this for the first time, just trust us here and come with us. You'll find you're making this up. That's exactly what you have to do. You decide now that you're standing on a landscape and there's a river behind you. You just trust it's there. You can probably hear it gurgling past. Imagine standing on lush green grass. And if you can see clearly in your mind's eye, see the green grass. Some of us don't see that so clearly, but we just know it's there. We tell ourselves, what's well, beautiful green? Overhead, the sky is deep blue and the air is warm and fresh with the scent of a meadow. Again, imagine sensing that scent or freshly mowed grass. Wow, how pleasant is that? Now imagine the landscape as you go walking forward away from the river, heading towards the fountain to your right. What have you got there? What did you create last time? What are you creating this time if you're new to this? I've got beautiful gently rolling hills that you find in parts of the world where there are vineyards. I've worked with lots of wine companies and I've lived next door to a vineyard in the south of France. To the left, I've got this beautiful landscape and away in the distance, I've got this estuary and the sea and away out there, an island. Some of you know that island. What an amazing place that is. What have you got in your landscape? Now, stepping forward, if you haven't done so already, construct for yourself now a fountain. We're going to assume that you've been here before, so you can come with us. Just fill yourself in, do what you can. Those of us who have been here before, remind yourself of your fountain. What did you make it out of? What was its size? I mean, how high was it? How wide was it? What did you make it out of? Was it a futuristic material, an ancient material? Something like those amazing fountains that let's one day hope we can all go and visit again in Rome. Oh my goodness. The Trevi Fountain. Wow. Imagine the fountain. Somewhere in the fountain, you've got your vessel for drawing water. F remind yourself of the vessel. Find the vessel. Imagine picking it up. Feel it in your hands. And draw the water from however you get the water, feel the water maybe running over the side of your hands, bring the water up to your face now in the vessel and immediately start to flash back and forth between this imaginary vessel and the real one you tend to use at home. I'll give you a moment to do that for a moment. The idea here is that every time you come to this landscape, you remind yourself to drink real water because you need to be hydrated. And every time you hydrate yourself for real, you remind yourself of this water. So you come and visit to do the healing and to get the benefits of the stress management that will come to you as a result of being here. Now enjoy drinking the water, place it back with a sense of ceremony and walk past the fountain and now somewhere up in the front, in front of you, create the location where you're going to build this amazing room. First of all, the location, kind of, Describe the location to yourself. Why have you chosen this location, this special place? One would imagine it must be beautiful. Now in a moment, I'm going to ask you to construct a big oblong room made of plate, sorry, of bulletproof, shall we say, glass. The toughest glass on the planet, but crystal clear to see through. And it's a big room because, as you know, I've said already, it has this platform which a, the equivalent of a bed could sit on top of because in will come the patient or the subject 
Now, first of all, on your location, construct this gigantic, not gigantic, maybe the wrong word, but a big, big room. Fairly high, reasonably wide, fairly long. You're at the narrow end of this oblong room you're creating. Crystal clear uh, glass. Tough, tough, tough glass. Heat resistant glass. Now imagine as you look into the into the room, you now create the platform. The platform's the height of a hospital bed. It's much wider and longer than a hospital bed. And its surface is a silver gridded platform. And if you could go in the room, you could look down and you could see if the and the, if the floor below this silver grid uh, or the platform opens up and you can now see through the, sil the space in the silver grid all the way down to the core of the earth. So imagine creating that. Imagine that this platform is protected by the screen and the screen opens. Everything opens from right to left and closes from left to right. Now, it's closed over now and you've got the platform with the silver grid. The right hand, the entire right hand wall, the glass wall of the right hand side, imagine it now opening up and it opens up uh, from the top. It's, it, it's fulcrum is at the bottom of it, like a hinge, and it just opens up flat onto the earth. Now in a moment, we're going to bring in Boris Johnson. We all know who he is, so we can use him as our first model, our first case. Now, Boris Johnson, as we know, you know Boris, you, you can probably see him in your mind's eye right now, his hair, his physique, um, his voice, you'll have your own view about him, just leave that aside. Um, what he do is, you know that he's in St Thomas's Hospital in London. It's important when you're doing cases, you'd have the person's name and you know their location. They're going to be in a hospital somewhere. We know he's roughly, what age is he? I, personally, I don't know. I guess he's in his 40s, but I'm assuming he is. Um, you would, it's ideal to know the age of the person, so you really do connect to the right person. But we all know Boris, so here we go. Imagine your mind going all the way to St Thomas's Hospital, imagine you're in the hospital now, you're in the very ward, you're in the very room, if he's in his own room, where Boris is. Now in your imagination, bring your awareness back to this room. You're looking through the narrow end and you're looking at the platform. The right-hand side is down. Imagine now Boris coming slowly in from the right. Now his entire being settling flat out. His feet are towards you, head away from you. He's just like he's lying on a bed, but he's lying on your platform now. Bring back up the right-hand wall of the room, everything cased again. Now in a moment, you're going to imagine this brilliant, brilliant white light coming from the top, the top of the, the roof, as it were. It's glass too, coming from the centre of the universe. And we'll count slowly from 30 to 1, as you concentrate on this. The other thing you're going to concentrate on is the loud um vibration and you're going to see the brilliant white light and feel the vibration as it comes through the building in through your own body. Now, let's begin. Imagine now below Boris the platform that he's resting on, that silver grid, that just below that, the it swings open now, it just slides open. And you now begin to sense the heat. It, the heat does not bother him. Imagine now turning on this brilliant white light coming from the centre of the universe, filling up this room. Unbe you can almost cannot even look at it. It's so bright. It's unbelievably bright. The whole space. Brilliant white light. It's forcing down now through his body, taking with it every single aspect of coronavirus. Have this intention. Everything to do with it. How it's affecting 
every organ in his body and every system in his body and every cell in his body, right through, through his body, down through the grid, down into the centre of the earth to be combusted into this amazing fire. And we'll count slowly from 30 to 1 as you do this. 30, 29, 28, 27, 26, 25, 24, 23, 22, 21, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Close over the, the platform. I will count from 1 to 30. Still the bright white light. Now its job now is to regenerate every cell and system and organ in his body. Let's do it now. One, two, three, four, five. Brilliant white light, the um sound, feeling the vibration in your body. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, in perfect health. Imagine him in perfect health and open up the left hand wall now, all the way down as did on the right hand side, down so that it's right rest, it's resting on the, the ground. And let him, in your imagination, in perfect health, imagine him leaving and going back to his location in St. Thomas's Hospital. Perfectly healthy, perfectly well. A new man. Now close it all up again. In future, you'll bring whoever you need in there. Tomorrow, after midday, you'll be able to find on my timeline at Jack Mindstore the address of the new Facebook page that you can apply to join and I want every one of you on here because I'll see the numbers every one of you to join because that was the deal and we'll start working cases there we should be busy for a while but let's hope it tails off quickly you work with it for a week uh, or two weeks or work for a week next week was Klaus we'll talk about it briefly this and then uh, and a, four, uh, a week after that you'll get more advanced stuff with this but here's another thing those of you who are watching and have tuned in tonight or are watching this later, there are all sorts of faiths here and none. There's all sorts of denominations within faiths, no doubt. But what, we, what I was guided to say to people was, whatever your faith is, if you've got a faith, if you want to have inside the room symbology that's appropriate to you uh, in terms of your belief system that adds to a healing dynamic, feel free to do that. For example... Uh, someone very powerfully in the other group shared that they, they had four of the archangels at each corner because that's their, they have a big belief in that and that's wonderful. And, and uh, uh, Christ was there too because they've got that belief, but other beliefs are fine and other things that have got nothing to do with any faith. But in fact, there's something about your belief system that can empower you. Obviously, feel free. What you've got to realise here quickly is that you're using your imagination. It's your imagination. But we've got a device and we've got a methodology. You follow the methodology. What you must do at the end of it is you must choose, because it's your choice, it's you shaping, it's you designing the creativity of your imagination. You see the person well, perfectly well, fully recovered before they leave. So some people you might find they just walk out, there might be other things that happen, might be some interesting dynamic takes place within the methodology, and that's fine. And you know what, you can share that and you'll be able to read that on the page. So that's us, the time's up, guys. My goodness, an hour just flew by. I'm looking forward to any comments that I may be able to read about this session. I took the risk, you took the risk to join me 
Let's go to Geller out of our comfort zones and do something extraordinary. And I'll see you a week from now. And those of, those of us who are on the uh, Extreme Mindfulness Group, we're now going to gather for the next phase of this development of this and we'll share that with you in a fortnight. But please turn up next week for the joint session with Klaus. You're going to love him. And uh, see you soon, guys. Bye now. Bye-bye. Thanks for coming again. Un unbelievable. Tremendous. Bye-bye.